So I'm going to take it upon myself to have a disagreement with Eliezer Yudkowsky on something. So one thing that he says is that many worlds implies uh, normality. So first of all, he introduced the world to many worlds um, in, in some sense. I mean, he, he made it very popular um, within uh, sort of online communities that would otherwise have not thought much of uh, many worlds or possibly even uh, much about anything regarding quantum mechanics. But Eliezer Yudkowsky made uh, this popular and it turns out that he just happens to be right and quantum mechanics does imply many worlds. Um, it's a straightforward implication of it and many people um, would agree. Um, other credible people, if credible people is what you need, uh, David Deutsch, Sean Carroll, the vast majority of uh, physicists that study this are coming around uh, to what Stephen Hawking had already said was a trivial uh, implication of many of, of the wave function not collapsing is many worlds. So um, the issue came when uh, physicalists with regard to consciousness, so people who did not believe that consciousness is something which is epiphenomenal or something which uh, requires a sort of extra magical soul stuff, uh, realized that if consciousness is just a physical process embodied in the motions of a physical process, uh, then therefore you're going to have uh, quantum immortality under many worlds. Presumably, uh, Yudkowsky got uh, scared about the implications that this might have on the behavior of people and then created this uh, terrible post, really, where, where he had this analogy that um, relativity uh, doesn't just replace Newtonian mechanics, but instead sort of has to uphold it. And all the predictions of Newtonian mechanics still should be expected to work within uh, this new uh, framework of relativity. And that is a horrible, horrible analogy because Actually, under relativity, you now have um, mass-energy equivalence, for one thing. Mass-energy equivalence, and now you can plan to nuke some fucking country. So, if you're an intelligent agent, now you, you've got another move available to you. If, if it happens to benefit your goals, uh, this new ontology that you have uh, discovered and, and verified to be true radically replaces uh, Newtonian mechanics. So. With Newtonian mechanics, you had a single stage of reality on which everyone uh, and everything happened, and there was a single clock. So it was the same time for everyone. This was the fantasy, and this was cherished. This was an integral part of Newtonian mechanics. Relativity destroyed that. Now you have uh, relative reference frames, and therefore an, a mess of uh, clocks uh, in different directions and in, in relative reference frames. So now you can also exploit time dilation. You could go and orbit a supermassive black hole and come out millions of years into the future having scrolled through the pages of history, right, in, in super fast mode. So uh, you come out and it's the future. That's a move that's available to you now. You know, you have time dilation. So all of these uh, pieces of knowledge are not trivial. You know, it's not like you're just preserving Newtonian mechanics. You're completely overthrowing it, really. And insofar as it's still accurate, it's just useful. It's useful in, in some situations, it's approximately correct, but it, you should not expect to find yourself in a Newtonian mechanic-like world, really. It, that's just a failure of uh, seeing the options which are available to you. So in the same way, now we look at what many worlds allows and we realize, okay, it implies quantum immortality, so I can't actually cease to exist. What can happen is I can degrade my computational specificity from this location. I have uh, some goal, goal A. This is what defines me from this location. And I realize, you know, there are many branches, right? And branches don't actually correspond to like decision-like events, which, which is a misconception. It's not like every time you make a decision, you know, you branch off into one direction and, and another where you made the other decision. And, you know, the braid, which contains, you know, every possible version of up quark, down quark, every possible color of gluon and so on, that's already there. Um, but 
still, you know, just to, um, to think about it in, in more simple terms and in sort of more understandable terms, think of it like branches. And it, because it does end up being the case that it looks a lot like this sort of simple intuition in which different things do happen. It just, but in none of them do you actually cease to exist if consciousness is just a physical configuration. So what can happen is in some of them, you can degrade your computational specificity. So computational specificity, what does this mean? This means that um, you have algorithms on top of algorithms on top of algorithms, right? So you have all these very complex connections of stuff, and then they build on top of other complex connections of stuff. And it is within these patterns that build on top of each other that you get rich experiences and a sense of self and everything that's happening and you know all the quality of varieties they are all dependent on high computational specificity low computational specificity here is high here is way low when you have way low um, you're just like the simplest possible experience ever the simplest possible self-awareness that could ever exist whether that happens in a, in a toddler barely gaining an understanding of existence those raw experiences of barely understanding that they're alive, whether it happens when you're going to sleep, wherever it happens, it's the simplest possible experience um, that could ever happen, right? And you know, now you can take into account that this is at most what you could ever be, right? You're not really traveling anywhere because Newtonian mechanics, again, uh, the, the time which is sweeping forward is a lie. Uh, so you're not really you know, going in one direction as opposed to another. But you can take into account that you never actually die, and then it's a matter of, from this location, where do you want to dump more experiential mass into? So you might have the goal now of dumping a lot of your experiential mass into this by attempting uh, suicide, uh, you know, attempting to degrade your computational specificity in some way. And, and so you know it, it, that you're going to dump a lot of these if you try. Right, you're, you're going to send them here, and this is not going to share your goal, right? This is going to be like, at that point, you know, once you're on, on that path, you know, you're sharing a vastly different goal, right? Um, in order to get there, from the goal that maybe you had um, over there, uh, which might have been some meta goal, which is taking into account that you want to forget your goal and you want to degrade your computational specificity in order to have a lot of your measure become harvestable. So what do you mean by harvestable? So some future algorithm could be run, run on top of this. So some future algorithm can be uh, used over here to sort of like over here to increase computational specificity. It increases computational specificity on this tribute that you offer to it, which is like right here, which is pretty simple. And some future machine learning algorithm or some self-modeling process can learn and absorb it and use it in some way, now bind to it. And again, it doesn't matter how far into the future uh, that actually occurs. Um, it's going to, th this is already happening. I mean, for you to even see uh, a red circle is the example I give. And let me stop using circles because I've used too many circles. A red square, right? For you to even see a red square, this is already distributed in space time. So the processing of, uh, of square occurred at some point in the brain over here. And the processing for red occurred at some point in the brain over here. And so these are already timeline, time-like separated. Not to mention that all the neurons specifying the computations are space-like separated from each other. In, in, in fact, you know, they're just nothing is actually sharing the same uh, hypersurface of the present. Not that it would matter again because there's no uh, time sweeping forward. So, to even be able to see a red circle, to even be able to have an experience, computationalism, just conservative computationalism already assumes that you are part of a tenseless object. It, is, it assumes that computations in the future can have access to computations in the past 
in order to create an experience right there, right? An experience that somehow this can use this, no matter if it happened in the past. Um, so what's to say that something way out in the future life cone can't be using us and, and harvesting us? It, it is, it probably is. You know, if someone uh, is using some other algorithm over there that's building on top of our experiences and, and our computations, they are, you know, you're being useful just, as, just by walking around and like doing stuff. Um, but the point is, we assume that those with high specificity are already sufficiently complex that they fit into less keyholes. That's the point. Over here, you fit into way more keyholes uh, than over here because this is already complex. You're already building on top of a lot of stuff. Whereas this is kind of like more uh, raw building blocks algorithmically. Um, and, and so, yeah, now you could do like death note type shit. Like you could forget who you were in order to achieve some other meta goal. I don't know what that meta goal would be, but in principle, you, you could do this. And I mean, this is like higher levels of intelligence. This is what natural selection would do, right? Natural selection uh, is going to kill off its, its organisms, but it itself survives. You know, natural selection is like its own cold intelligence that pushes onward, you know, mowing through all these organisms that compose it. Um, and that's what you might do. You might have some other superior goal and um, in the meantime, you know, kill your future self, uh, but degrade his computational specificity in order to have uh, him be used by some other future stuff. Um, and now this is a move that's available to you that if you thought uh, death was like oblivion, uh, obliteration, you, you wouldn't have this move available to you. You wouldn't even think to do this. Whereas now you can. I don't know what you would use it for, but you could certainly uh, use it. <laughs>